Hello folks, I'm The Lost Mapper, and today I'm going to show you how to download, add, style, and combine GPX files in your QGIS projects. So your first question probably is, what is a GPX file? Well, GPX stands for GPS Exchange Format, and that generally means you're working with data that's either coming from or heading to a GPS. Now that GPS might be a device in your car, or it could be an app on your phone, or something on your watch or on some other special uh, GPS device made by somebody like Garmin. GPX files are XML files, which are actually text files that both computers and humans can read. Sites like Strava, Garmin Connect, uh, Gaia GPS use this format. GPX files are a collection of geographic data in the form of tracks, waypoints, and routes. Tracks are recordings of an activity such as going hiking or mountain biking. Waypoints are points of interest, such as a scenic overlook or perhaps a technical on a mountain biking trail. And routes are pre-planned routes to follow using a GPS. So how to hike from the base of a mountain to a summit or how to bike from one end of the park to the other. To get started, we're gonna create a new folder for a project. So I'm just gonna call this one GPX. Then we're going to head over to QGIS and click on the new project button. And we're going to head into properties and call this uh, working with GPX and click OK. And then I'm going to click save and I'm going to navigate to that directory I made. And I'm just going to call this uh, working with GPX. Finally, I'm going to add a OpenStreetMap layer to my project. Next, if you head over to topographics.com slash GPX, they have a page that details the GPS exchange format, uh, including a couple example files. And we're gonna click on examples and we're gonna download this fellsloop.gpx. Then you're gonna wanna move that file from your downloads folder into the project folder we made. Back in QGIS, we're gonna head over to the upper left into the browser, and we wanna open up the project home directory. And in here you can see we have our fellsloop.gpx file. You can also open this up and see that it contains routes, route points, tracks and track points, and waypoints. There are a few ways that you can add a GPX file to your project. You can drag the entire GPX file into your project down here into the layers, or you can take one of the individual components and add those. We're going to take the whole file and drag it in here. And then we're gonna get a dialogue asking us which pieces of the file that we'd like to import. And you can see that we have route points, which are a point Z type, routes, which are a line string Z, uh, and tracks, which is a multi-line string Z. Essentially, these mean this is a point that also has elevation. This is a line that has elevation, and these are multiple lines that have elevation. So the number in parentheses tells me how many features each of these layers has. So I can see that there's one route, 46 route points, and 86 waypoints. So I'm going to hold down the command button and click routes and route points so that I'm only importing the ones that have data. And I'm gonna say add layers. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the layers and go down to routes, right click on that and choose zoom to layer. And that will take me to the area that that route exists inside of. So right now, the routes are a little bit hard to see. It's a very thin pink line and it's hard to discern it against all the other things going on in the OpenStreetMap layer. So what we're gonna do is double click on the routes layer. And if it's not already selected, head into the symbology tab. And for now, we're just gonna scroll down and choose simple red line and hit okay. And now we can come back and we can actually see that route. Let's also go to waypoints and let's choose a blue dot for these, hit okay. And then double click on route points and choose a red dot for those. 
Now you may have noticed that the route points and the waypoints share some of the same locations. So if I turn off route points, you can see the waypoints underneath. So right now our map is a little bit confusing because we have all these dots and lines on it, but we don't know what any of them mean. Now we probably wanna dig into the data to understand what these represent. So if we head over to our waypoints layer and we right click and choose open attribute table, that's gonna open up a table that represents all the information, all those locations inside of that particular layer. Uh, a helpful thing to do is to click this doc attributes table, which will bring it down to the bottom, which allows you to look at the data and the map at the same time. Now with the attribute table in place, it might help to zoom to layer again so that everything fits while the table is there. So since we have a lot going on, I'm going to first turn off the route points. And then if I click on these entries here in the waypoints, you can see different, you can see their entries highlighting in yellow on the map, which helps me identify what is what. What would be even more help is if each of these things was labeled. Another thing we can do inside of the attribute table is click on this organize columns entry. And I'm going to unselect all of the columns here that have null values in them. So null means nothing, unknown. There is no data here. And right now that's all just taking up space. So if I remove those, it'll make it easier to see the stuff that does have data. And I'm gonna hit okay. All right, there's still a few more there. So I'm gonna hit organize columns again. And I'm gonna turn off the last few. Cool, so now it's easy to see they have a name, they have a description, they have a type. But it would be nice to see that information on the map. So what we're gonna do is double click on waypoints again and select the label tab. <clears throat> and at the top here, we have a drop down. We're gonna choose single labels. And it looks like the description field has a better uh, human readable piece of information to put on the map. So let's choose this value drop down and choose description or desk. And let's make this bold. And I'm gonna suggest opening up the buffer tab here and checking draw text buffer. That will draw a nice little outline around the text. And then if we hit okay, we can now see that these things are labeled. Let's zoom in a little bit more. So now we know what some of these things represent. And there's a lot of them. Uh, let's turn that label off and then turn on the route points and do the same thing. So we're gonna double click, head into labels, choose single label, and pick description and hit okay. And I forgot to put on the mask. So I'm going to double click again and head to buffer and check draw text buffer. So let's do the same thing for the routes layer. I'm going to turn off the route points layer, double click and open up routes, head to labels, choose single label, make sure name is selected and make sure that I've checked off draw text buffer. And now we can see that this particular route is called Bellevue. We can do the same thing and open up its attribute table and dock it as well. And we can see that there's just one route inside of this layer, a uh, just the Bellevue layer. So as you may have noticed, uh, if I double click on the route points again and open up the label uh, tab, there are a lot of options in here, and those are worthy of their own episodes, which we can dive into in depth. So for now, just about getting the basic information on the page for data that you have. If you're into activities like hiking, biking, mountain biking, kayaking, etc., then there's a good chance you're using an app to record your activities. And a lot of those apps and websites let you download those as GPX files. So for example, here's an activity I had recently while I was 
biking in Chattanooga. Uh, and you can see there's a map here. And in the upper right of the map, you notice that there's a little GPX icon. So I can click on that to download that file. The other way to do that is to head under these three dots here and you can say export GPX. I'm gonna head back to my folders and copy that downloaded ride from my downloads folder into the GPX folder for this project. Then back in QGIS, we can see underneath project home that we have the lunch ride here. And we can also open that up and see the different types of data that it provides. I'm going to drag that file down into my layers and it's gonna show me my options again. This time I have the option of tracks, which was my ride, or track points, which is all the points along that ride. This time I'm just gonna add tracks and say add layers. I'm gonna right click on that layer and choose zoom to layer to jump to it. I'm going to open it up, double click on it, switch over to symbology again and choose that simple red line. So this video ended up being a little bit longer than I thought it was gonna be. So I'm going to cover combining GPX files in part two. And there we're going to combine multiple GPX files into one and then style them based on the type of activity going on. So look for that coming next week.